this part two video, we are going to look at the connection between dimension of icon subspaces and something we call multiplicity of an icon value. Suppose we have an m by m matrix A and lambda is an icon value of A. The largest integer k such that t minus, minus lambda raised to the power of k is a factor of the characteristic polynomial. The integer is called the multiplicity of lambda and we use the notation ma lambda. For example, Suppose we have an A matrix whose characteristic polynomial is the one given here. Then we see it has eigenvalue 5 and uh, minus 6 and 7. Now, what would be the multiplicity of the eigenvalue 5? MA5. That will be the largest integer such that t minus 5 raised to the power of this integer k is a factor. So this number in this case will be equal to 2. How about ma minus 6? Then we would have a 1 here. So this is 1, and MA7 will be 3. Example, A matrix is the one here, and the characteristic polynomial of A is this polynomial. So we see that 4 and the 2 are both the roots of the characteristic polynomial, so A has eigenvalue 4 and eigenvalue 2. Now we would like to find the multiplicity of the eigenvalue 4 and uh, the eigenspace for a lambda equal to 4, the dimension of this eigenspace. And for the eigenvalue equal to 2, we would like to find its multiplicity and the dimension of the corresponding eigenspace. We have the characteristic polynomial here, so we can clearly see what MA4 and MA2 is. But now we want to find the dimension of the eigenspace. The eigenspace WA4 is the null space, this dimension of the null space. WA4 is the null space of this matrix. So we form this matrix A minus 4 times identity. And we find out what the REF is. And we see that this matrix has rank equal to 2. So the dimension of the eigenspace is equal to 1. Now let's consider eigenvalue 2. We want to find the dimension of this eigenspace. So we form the matrix A minus 2 times identity. And then... Uh, we apply reduce, we apply Gaussian elimination to find the REF, and this is the REF, and we see that this matrix has rank equal to 2, so the dimension of the null space will be equal to 1. And the multiplicity of the eigenvalue by looking at the characteristic polynomial, we see that MA2 is equal to 2. So, a question. Are these two numbers the same? 
the multiplicity of lambda and the dimension of the icon space corresponding to lambda? Well, not necessarily, right? No, in general, right? Because here in this case, they are the same, but in this case, they are different. Although these two numbers may not be the same, but there is a connection between these two numbers. In the previous example, we saw that the dimension of the eigenspace associated with the lambda can be smaller than the multiplicity of lambda. Theorem 5.1 tells us, tells us that one is always smaller or equal to the other. The dimension of the eigenspace associated with the lambda is smaller or equal to the multiplicity of a lambda. To show this, let's let um, have k equal to the dimension of the eigenspace. And let's say that we have a basis v1 to vk that is a basis for the eigenspace. And we know by extension theorem we can extend a to a basis b for our n. Let's write down what we have in, sim in simpler notation. A, and this is B matrix, so AB is equal to B and then C, BC. In other words, A is equal to B, C, B inverse. What does this mean? This means a particular relationship between A and C, right? A and C are similar, and they have the same characteristic polynomials. And characteristic polynomial is just what we need if we want to look at the multiplicity of lambda. So, if A same as if C, and this is determined C minus T I N, and uh, C, what is C? Remember C is of this form. The first k vectors are identity vectors scaled by lambda and the remaining column vectors are those c vectors we will put down a big x here meaning that it's don't care so if we write it down it will be of this form lambda 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 on the diagonal and uh, for the remaining part let's just simply put down f and g matrix here Okay, so now if we look at the determinant, the determinant of a C minus T I N, we have determinant of lambda minus T. There are K of them here on the diagonal, and then F here, and G minus T I N minus K. Now, let's take the determinant of this. This is matrix is actually block diagonal. So we have um, block upper triangular, sorry. So right here, this is A and this is B and this is D. Then the determinant of this, this thing, we have seen that it's equal to determinant of A times determinant D. So determinant of this thing will be lambda minus t raised to the power k and then determinant of this thing here g minus t i n minus k so it does contain the factor lambda minus t raised to the power k and that tells us that the multiplicity should be at least k can it be more than k Can the multiplicity be larger than k? We saw in the previous example that it can happen. So, when does it have multiplicity more than k? Well, if this term will also contribute lambda minus t, 
then the multiplicity can be larger than k. This b here is a calligraphic b. And now we use this regular b for a matrix. It's the matrix of all these v vectors, v1 to vn, a basis for rn. And now we apply a matrix on each v, and we call this u. ui is equal to avi. Because each v, v1 to vk, is a basis for the icon space. So, when we apply A matrix, what do we get? For I equal to 1 to K, we get back UI. That's the same as a lambda VI because it's this V1 to VK are in the eigenspace. And uh, for I equal to K plus 1 to N, we don't know what it is. So UI, but then VI is a basis for UI, right? A basis for RN. So we can write it as a linear combination of all these V1 to VN. So we can write UI in this form. B times CI for some CI vectors in RN. Now, let's write down what we have got so far in the matrix form. When we have A here and V1 to Vn here, A V1 is a lambda V1, A V2 lambda V2, all the way to Vk, A Vk is a lambda Vk, and A V for the remaining V, we put down U. Now, all these column vectors, all these column vectors can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in B. For example, for the first vector, lambda V1, we can simply put down lambda E1 because this will extract the first column vector of B, which is V1. Similarly, we get lambda E2 all the way to lambda EK for these vectors. And for these U vectors, we can simply put down CK plus 1 to CN. These are the linear combination coefficients like what we have here. Let's call this matrix C. Example, suppose A is this matrix. Then the characteristic polynomial of A is equal to t squared plus 1. What are the eigenvalues of A? Does A have any eigenvalues? Well, A has no eigenvalue. A has no real eigenvalues. And in our discussion of chapter 5, we talked about only real eigenvalues. So this particular example of A has no real eigenvalues. But if we allow complex eigenvalues, then we know a polynomial of degree n can always be factorized. It can always be written as in this form and uh, it would have roots lambda 1 lambda 2 to lambda n these may be complex so if we allow complex eigenvalue complex eigenvalues are k if that's the case then each n by n matrix has exactly n eigenvalues of course, this includes multiplicity. If we have the same root two times, then we count it as two times, counting multiplicity. We have a small reading assignment for 
chapter 5.2. That's example 5 of 5.2. So far, we have defined eigenvalue and eigenvector for a matrix. In a very similar manner, we can define eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a linear operator. Suppose T is a linear operator on Rn and its standard matrix is A. A non-zero vector V is called an eigenvector of T if the image of V under T is equal to V scaled by lambda for some real scalar lambda. And this lambda is called the eigenvalue of T that corresponds to V. Similarly, the set of all eigen of all vectors such that T V equal to lambda V is called the eigenspace of T corresponding to lambda. The characteristic polynomial of A, A is the standard matrix of T, and the characteristic polynomial equation of A is called the characteristic equation of T, and the characteristic polynomial of A is called the characteristic polynomial of T. Mm -hmm.